Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. All right, everybody, here we are, another Friday Night Flies at Bass Pro in Tawasin. I've got a new face here with me today. He's going to tie up some of these pink flies, I believe they are. They're kind of pretty. I'll let him describe them as he introduces himself. Uh, that's his buddy's company there, Hook and Vice. Give him a look out. Um, so here is... Who are you? Where do you come from? My name is Jordan Simpson. I grew up in Tawasin, and I work for Pacific Angler, located at 78 East Broadway in Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, good guys there. They've helped me and supported me throughout my very young fly fishing and fishing career, more or less. And they kind of know what they're talking about. Sort of. <laughs> kind of know. But, um, today we're going to tie a simple fly. It really requires three materials besides a hook. Bead, some uh, diamond flat braid, and then of course some palmer chenille in size small. Very simple. You probably bang a whole bunch of these out while watching a Canucks game. Or not watching the Canucks game. And uh, yeah, for pinks, pink salmon the smaller of the salmon species, probably the smallest. And uh, I spend a lot of time eating krill, small shrimp, euphosids, and the uh, biggest thing is think pink for pinks. So uh, I'm going to tie this fly here. Um, experience level is probably beginner-ish. It's pretty simple, uh, as long as you don't bulk things up. It just takes a bit of practice and experience to keep proportions right, but it is very simple. And uh, we're going to start on this pattern here. I don't have a name for it. Um, pr pretty freestyle. You can experiment with different colors for different species. But today we're going to tie this one here. It is 2017, odd numbered year. That means pinks, so here we go. All right guys, so this is what the fly looks like when finished. Uh, it's pretty simple, it's not too bulky, easy to cast. Um, great for using six, seven, even eight weights if you want, but for pink salmon, six or seven weights are a great size there. Um, so that's a finished fly, uh, here we go, we're gonna start now. I'm gonna, s I've already pre-slid uh, on a small little bead here. This is the Mustad S71 SP or sorry, S71SNP-DT in a size 6, uh, 2XH, 1XL in terms of size. And there's the bead there for you. I'm just going to put that in the vise and uh, we'll get going. Alright, for thread choice here we're using UTC Ultra Thread 140 in fluorescent pink. Uh, nice bright color, um, great, easy to see, easy for the pinks to see, and uh, that's sort of what we want. So I'm just going to start this thread behind the bead, sliding the bead all the way up to the hook eye. And one thing I like to do is always do a thread base. Uh, I know some guys will sort of tie in and then sort of quickly rush to the back and skimp over. I find at least a thread base sort of helps from tie in materials to keep them from spinning. Also adds durability. So that being said now, uh, we're going to take the diamond flat braid in fluorescent hot pink. I've pre-cut a length, you can sort of figure it out when you go along. And we're going to leave the tag end hanging off the back, a uh, little ways, enough room to play with for insurance. And then we're just going to tie that in on top, it's pretty simple. And then I'm just going to take the diamond flat braid, I don't know, start wrapping it forward. I'm going to cover up the shank of the hook. I'm, doing, I'm going to do a couple layers. Um, you know, the front of the fly is going to be a little looser. And then as I wrap back, I'm going to really pull down on it. That's going to build a taper um, as you tighten it. It's an easy way to build a taper without adding bulk in many multiple layers. I'm going to take that top part. I'm going to tie it off. So now I have two tails technically. Pretty simple. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut that tail about one hook gap. You don't want it too long, you don't want short strikes. So what a hook gap is where how long you want the tail to be. We're gonna cut it well there. And now we're gonna take our thread and we're gonna just spiral wrap it forward, spacing it out, nothing crazy. That sort of locks down that diamond flat braid, adds some durability. I told you this was a simple fly. So I'm gonna take um, Palmer Chanel, um, size small in pink. And I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna be wrapping away from myself. Really important, you take that material have it aiming downwards. If you have it aiming upwards, it's not going to palmer properly. So aiming downwards, it'll give you that nice tonal shape as you wrap forward. Tying in just behind the bead on the side closest to me. I'm going to wrap some thread, make a little base for it. 
That way I know where it's going to be going. And now I am going to Palmer the Palmer Chanel. So keep teasing it backwards as you wrap it. I'm just going to do a small little throat or collar. And two, three wraps is all you really need. Remember, you want it to be able to breathe. You don't want it spinning or being bulky. It's probably enough there. My final wrap, I'm going to wrap up in front of my thread. That gives me the ability to lock it in properly. That's pretty cool. It's fun stuff to work with that uh, Palmer Chanel. It gives a really cool effect to lots of different flies. I'm going to trim it off short. There we go. And you can use a whip finish or a whip finisher. I'm just going to use my fingers. Because you don't know how to use a whip finisher? That is correct. I <laughs> don't know how to use a whip finisher. I have tied probably thousands of flies in my career at this point. Um, since I've been doing this since I was about 11 or 12. I own a whip finisher. You can never figure it out. Fingers, easier, faster, and you also don't have to buy a whip finisher. So it's cheaper. <laughs> I'm going to do a couple, just to lock it down. And then one thing you can do if you want is most people will finish off their flies with head cement. Um, it works. Um, I like it. But for durability, I'm going to be using Loon Outdoors UV Clear Fly Finish Thin okay. or Flow. Uh, whichever one you want. Thin is a little thicker, and flow, of course, is pretty liquidy. I'm going to use the thin, only so I can use less of it. Now I'm going to apply it. This is a full rotary vise. So I'm just going to throw a little bead on the top, and I'm just going to lock it. I'm going to dab it in. I'm not going to drag the bead of, of fly finish around it. I'm literally just going to make sure I've coated the thread. And that will give it a faux epoxy-like finish. I'm just going to quickly flash it. You see the UV there, it really pops. Ooh, that really there. really pops, big time. We love our UV on Friday Night Flies. So it's almost done there, you can feel it, it's dried tack free. Now I'm just going to take my bodkin, or a needle, sewing needle, craft needle, whatever you want. And I'm just going to separate all the fibers in that tail. Could you use a brush of some kind? Or uh, you could use a brush, but I find with a brush, with the hooks inside the brush, if it's a, like a good dubbing brush, you can actually rip or pull out threads or pieces of the tail fiber and it hooks into it. So by using the needle, it just separates it nice and clean, puffs it up, and uh, that's it, guys. Pretty simple, pretty easy, and honestly, when you're fishing for pinks, don't get too complicated or technical. Think pink for pinks, and there you go. Right on. Let's head on back up. All right, guys, there you have it. Jordan's first fly on Friday Night Flies. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. Um, pretty deadly looking pattern, especially under that UV light. That thing glows like crazy. All right, so he's going to have another one, I think. Um, another saltwater fly this time. So let's uh, get set up, and we'll see you in the next one.